Okay, final part of our motion question here, steel calculator inactive. This one is very short and sweet here in their explanation. So let's look at it. Two particles move along the x-axis between zero and six. The position of particle P at time T is given by this cosine function, while the position of particle R is given by a cubic function. Four times zero to six, find all times during which uh, particle R is moving to the right. So notice this one changes a little bit. We've been given velocity functions the majority of the time, but here they give us position functions. Because, you know, when I first read that, I was like, oh, this is calculated inactive, and they're asking me about a cubic function, and I'm going to have to find the zeros without a calculator. But look, they're not asking us to do that. They've given us position. Moving to the right is where velocity is positive. So we need to find our velocity function here for particle r. So r prime of t is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. So 0 is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and factor out my GCF, make life easier on myself. So t minus 3 t minus 1, so t equals 3 and 1, okay, that's where I'm equal to 0, so we're between 0 and 6, 1, 3, so I got to test like 0. 0.5 and 2 and 5, plugging this into my velocity function, where's the thesis, plug it in, plug it into the factored form, because we're just looking for the sign here, so we've got positive 3 times when we plug in 0. 0.5, that first factor is negative, the second factor is negative, so positive times negative times negative is positive. Plug in 2. Positive times a negative times positive, so it's negative right there. And then when we plug in 5, positive, 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 so it's positive. Okay. So, um, particle R is moving to the right. Four times zero to one and three to six. Okay, so you get one point for the derivative, you get one point for the answer. Part B. Find all times during which the two particles travel in opposite directions. So I've already figured out where R is traveling. I need to do the same process for P now. Okay, so I need to find P prime of T. So P prime of T would be, we've got two times the derivative of cosine is negative sine, pi over four T times pi over four. Let's simplify this before we set it equal to zero. Two over four is two, so we've got negative pi over two sine of pi over 4 t, so that's p prime of t. So we need to find its critical number, set it equal to zero. Well, when we divide by that constant in front, zero divided by anything is zero, so that's just going to go away. So the question is, where is sine equal to zero? Well, sine is equal to zero at zero and at pi. Remember when we did that other problem, that's not t, that's the angle inside the trig function, so it's equal to pi over 2 times t. So we need to multiply both sides on both equations by 2 over pi, which doesn't change the 0. Um, but it's going to give us 2 on this one. Okay. Um, now, here's kind of a tricky concept. We need to go beyond just one revolution. We need to consider going to 2 pi because this interval goes from 0 to 6, right? Yeah, from 0 to 6. Um, so uh, we, we didn't get enough critical numbers because 0 doesn't help us as a critical number. That's right at the beginning of our interval. Um, so that doesn't help.
Sine is equal to zero. And oh, my fours turned into twos. Oh my goodness, we're probably thinking that I'm crazy. Okay, hang on. Back up in the park here. Okay. That's pi over four. Okay, so zero is equal to pi over four t. And pi is equal to pi over four t. So that gives us zero for t. That gives us four for t. Okay. So at zero and at four, we don't have to worry about the other one because that would put us um, outside of our time interval. Okay, what I was showing you with the uh, two pi, okay, that would put us at what eight. So that'd be outside of our interval. All right. So. Zero, four, six. So we just need to check like I don't know, two and five. Okay. Um, so when we plug in two into this function, we're going to get um, two pi over four, which is pi over two. Sine of pi over two is positive one, so that's going to be a negative value. When we plug in five, five pi over four is in the third quadrant. Sine is negative. So we multiply by negative pi over 2, so that gives us a positive. Okay, so from 0 to 4, it's moving to the left. From 4 to 6, it's moving to the right. So we need to kind of compare this to our other function. So from 0 to 1, r is moving to the right. From 0 to 1, p is moving to the left. So um, the particles are moving... in opposite directions or zero to one <clears throat> okay uh let's look back at r one to three it's moving to the left one to three p is moving to the left so we're good there three to six it's moving to the right okay um three to six p from three to four, it's moving to the left, and then from four to six, it's moving to the right. So from zero to one, and from three to four, the particles are moving in opposite directions. You get one point for your derivative for P. You get one point for your sine analysis for P of T, for P prime of T, and you get one point for your answer. So we've used up five points so far. Let's look at part C. Find the acceleration of particle P at time three. So acceleration, we got to take the derivative again. And look what they're asking us. Is the particle speeding up, slowing down, or do we need the object? So we just found the derivative of P. We need to find the second derivative of P. So let's see here. I'm going to my simplified version right here. Um, so the derivative of that, keep the negative pi over 2 in front. The derivative of sine is cosine. Let's make sure my fours don't turn into twos this time. So when we simplify that, we get negative pi squared over 8 cosine of pi over 4t. Okay, so that is the second derivative. We need to find it at time 3. They didn't just ask us for the acceleration, they asked us for the acceleration at time 3. So p double prime of 3 is negative pi squared over 8 cosine of 3 pi over 4 and cosine of 3 pi over 4 that's right pi over 4 is there's those are easy this one's in the second quadrant cosine is negative there so we've got negative pi over 2 over 8 or excuse me pi squared over 8 times negative square root 2 over 2 negative times a negative is a positive so that is pi squared square root of 2 over 16. So really weird looking answer. But it is what it is. That's the answer. So that's P double prime of 3. And it wants to know, is the speed increasing or decreasing? So remember, we got that's positive. Okay, so that's good. 
but we got to compare it to the sine of velocity at that time. So we've got to find p prime of 3. Well, we don't have to find p prime of 3. Let's look at our chart. Okay, 3 falls, whoops, 3 falls right in here, right? So all of our velocities were negative at that time. So we can write p prime of 3 is less than 0. Mm, um, so it's negative, acceleration is positive, so since... Uh, velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. At p equals 3, uh, the particle p is slowing down. At that time. Okay, so you get 1.4 p double prime of 3 and you get 1.4 your answer with a reason. All right, the last part, we got two points left for part D. It says write, but do not evaluate, yay, an expression for the average distance between the two particles on the interval. So average, average value, okay, from 1 to 3. So we are talking 1 over 3 minus 1, an integral from 1 to 3. Okay, let's think about the distance between the two particles. So um, we need to put absolute value bars around this. Okay, P of T minus R of T. Okay, P of T and R of T give us their positions. So if we subtract those values, that will give us the distance between those positions. But we need the absolute value because it doesn't matter which one's on the left and which one's on the right. Um, so that's why we need the absolute value bars there. Okay, so you get 1.4 the integral, and you get 1.4 your limits and the constant. Okay, so this part right here gets you one point, and this part right here gets you one point.